بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على دين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إقرارا به وتوحيدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما مزيدا أما بعد We mentioned in the last class um, the section regarding the etiquettes and manners of relieving oneself or using the bathroom or answering the call of nature. The author, Al-Imam Ash-Shokani, rahimahullah, explained that the one who wishes to use the bathroom or relieve himself must cover him or herself until they become low to the ground and they should go far away and leave off speaking. Or before that, go far away and uh, if they can't go far away, if you don't choose to go far away, then at least enter into a surrounded place, a bathroom, an outhouse, something that has doors or a door and walls that's covering you. Uh, also to leave off speech, uh, to remove and leave outside of that place anything that is sacred with regards to Allah's names and his attributes, verses from the Quran, things like this. Uh, to avoid uh, relieving yourself in a place in which is prohibited according to the Islamic Sharia or according to the customs of the people, to avoid facing or turning your back to the Qibla, uh, and to clean yourself with three pure stones, or anything that takes the place of pure stones. Also, it is recommended to seek refuge before you begin, and to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you finish, according to the author. He says in the next chapter, Bab al-Wudu, the section of Wudu, يجب على كل مكلف أن يسمي إذا ذكر ويتمضمض ويستنشق ثم يغسل جميع وجهه ثم يديه مع مرفقيه ثم يمسح رأسه مع أذنيه ويجزئ مسح بعضه والمسح على العمامة ثم يغسل رجليه مع الكعبين وله المسح على الخفين ولا يكون وضوءا شرعيا إلا بالنية إذا سيس it is incumbent upon every mukallaf, every mukallaf. A mukallaf is a Muslim man or woman who is of age, the age of adolescence or sexual maturity, and has sanity, has a sound brain, sound mind. They're not mad or crazy. Anyone who is a mukallaf must do the following things. Number one, they must say bismillah when, as long as you remember to say bismillah. According to the author, not all of the ulama, not according to the one who's delivering the class, necessarily, yes or no, al-muhim, according to the author. It is obligatory to say bismillah if you remember, the author says. We understand from this that if you forget, then it's okay. But as long as you know and you remember, then you must say bismillah before you make wudu. Point number two, then it is incumbent upon you to place the water in your mouth and then spit it out. Place the water in your nose, inhale the water, and then blow it out of your nose. This is wajib, according to the author. You must do this. If you don't do this, then your wudu will be incorrect and incomplete. Number three, it is obligatory upon you to wash all of your face. Not part of your face. He said, jameer, all of your face. Okay, and not to go too deep. But the face, as the people of knowledge explain, is from the hairline to the chin, as far as length. The top of the hairline, the beginning of the hairline, my hairline might be a little low, whereas I have a widow's peak. But, okay, the top where the hair meets the skin to the chin. And as far as width, from ear to ear. Okay. He then says, uh, then one must wash his hands up to his elbows, starting from the fingertips all the way to the elbows including the forearm, pay close attention that the author did not say one must wash his or her hands at the beginning of the wudu. And that is something that's very commonly believed that you must wash your hands three times before wudu. That is incorrect. Not to go too far off the topic, but washing the hands three times at the beginning of wudu is not obligatory. It's not obligatory. That's the recommended act, which will be mentioned later on, but to clarify a lot of misconceptions. He then says... Then you must wash, or he says, wipe your head, and then afterwards your ears. 
His opinion is that the head must be wiped, not washed, and then the ears. Okay? He then says, If you only wipe part of your head, your wudu would be valid. According to the author, you do not have to wipe what? Your entire head. Half of the head? A third of the head? Three-fourths of the head? If you want to wash, wipe the whole head? Al-Muhim, you do not have to wipe your entire head according to the author. He then says, Wal masru ala al-imam, it is also valid and permissible to wipe over the imamah, a turban, a turban. The concept of the turban, what exactly is constituted by that term? Any type of head wrap, head covering, a woman's khimar, a hat, so on and so forth. Those are all further issues, which we call furu' fiqiyya. Or tafri'at, those are branches of the main fiqh principle or the main fiqh ruling that we're not going to get into. We cannot get into right now in this beginning stage. That will come, or that will be mentioned, or that has already been mentioned, and further detailed lectures and explanations of a hadith and of fiqh books. He then says, uh, he says, ثم يغسل رجلي مع الكعبين. Then you must wash your feet up to your ankle bone. Wash your feet to your ankles, your heels, your toes, the instep, the sole of your feet, everything must be washed. He then says, It is also valid for you to wipe over the leather socks. It is permissible, he says, he didn't say it was recommended. He didn't say it was obligatory or disliked, he says permissible to wipe over the leather socks. The concept of wiping over the leather socks, the details, the ins and the outs, can you wipe over boots, shoes, sandals, sneakers, Poly cotton socks, business socks that are very thin for dress shoes and things like this. Those are all further subsidiary issues of fiqh that we cannot get into. And it's beginning basic uh, um, primer. He then says, And a person's wudu cannot be a legislative wudu. A wudu that is according to the deen. Unless a person has the intention, why you're making wudu. In other words, if you just washed up to keep to make yourself cool or to clean yourself off or to refresh yourself or to wake yourself up, it is not a shari wudu. It is not a legislative wudu. Okay? Uh, so therefore, it shows the importance of the niya in Islam. Now, when do you put on the leather socks and wipe them? Can you wear normal type of socks, argyle socks, and wipe over them? Those are all further subsidiary, subsidiary issues that cannot be explained in this small summarized book. We ask Allah Azza to give us fiqh of the deen and firmness upon the deen until the day in which we would meet him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu alam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu.